Welcome back, everybody. My name is Token D Rock. Hopefully, all of you are having a wonderful Tuesday morning. Overall, crypto market cap is sitting at $1.732 trillion. Bitcoin dominance did inch just slightly up to 42.4%. ETH dominance is sitting at 17.8%. I believe that did inch up as well, right around 0.2%. Bitcoin was sitting around 37, 37.5 yesterday. That brought ETH pretty close to 2400 It's recovering since then. BNB is recovering a little bit. Cardano, a lot of these alts have not moved for the most part since yesterday's stream. So looking at the one minute chart for Bitcoin, you can see yesterday there was a lot of overbought areas. So that technically means buyers are going to become sellers at these particular levels. Like see like this spike right here, this spike right here, this spike right here. But as you can see, past eight hours, we haven't seen a whole lot of spikes indicating that Bitcoin is overbought. We did almost reach one over here more recently in the past half hour, past hour. But we haven't, <clears throat> we haven't been seeing any of those, what I'm trying to say in the past eight hours. Looking at the one hour chart, we don't really have confirmation if this is the bottom yet, but this doji star is a bullish reversal sign, which typically you see indicator the next day, but we'll see if that line of support holds considering all the fears about Ukraine and stuff like that war going on over there, as well as concerns about what Biden's executive order is going to do to crypto, whether it's going to provide clarity or if it's going to decimate crypto here in the United States. Looking at the bigger picture, you guys, at the one with the one day chart for Bitcoin. Again, we're looking at roughly 17 weeks since we put in an all time high back in early to mid November. I still think three is in the cards potentially. If three breaks, we could retest number two over here. But I think three might be a possibility because looking at the way this last little dump um, played out, as you can see, there's one, two, three candles, then bulls put in really small candle almost like a top and then the bears drive the price down two more days bulls get little relief rally mini one and then bears drive it down one or two more times and then the bulls finally push back up but we may not see that play out I'm just putting the idea out there that you may see that because you have to entertain all the possibilities we may see unfold in Bitcoin. I mean, for all we know, depending on this legislation, this executive order that Biden passes here in the next few days this week, for all we know, we could break all the way back down to number one or even break lower than that, depending on how the news is presented and perceived by the masses. But time will tell you guys, looking at the limit orders for for Bitcoin, I think I might start shifting these down a bit. Like I might shift my usual zone of buying 37.5, might shift that down to 36,000. I might shift this down to like 34, 33,000 and so on. That way I can accumulate because I do think we're going to see some more volatility, especially to the downside. I don't think we're going to be rallying here to 45, 50K anytime soon. I think again, looking at that daily chart for Bitcoin, Bitcoin. The bulls are not putting in the the higher highs that they need to. As you can see, the bulls since the beginning of the year have not been able to regain this 45,500 line of support. And as you can see, they tried to get it back there right before Valentine's Day. They just barely got above it. And then the bears drove the price back down. The bulls picked up the ball once more and they drove it back up there. They fell just a tad shy of 45.5 and the bears drove the price down. Now, are these lines of support going to hold? I don't know. But again, going back to these limit orders, I might be adjusting them downwards. I might start taking some of these limit orders off the table and just putting them on the side, putting them in USDC or something. Basically, just have liquid capital because I do think... Again, depending on how the news and all that is perceived by the public, it may send Bitcoin below 30K again. I mean, we are at only 38K right now, you guys. The fall of the 30K is really, really quick. We may see a slow bleed, though. These uh, VGX limit orders, I'm going to probably put some limit orders back in around there. Um, if we shoot back up to $1.80 or $1.90 or something, I might put some limit orders $1.60, $1.70 again. 
again, just to, again, lower this dollar cost average. Since we've been buying some more VGX with these limit orders, I did a market order yesterday with like the remaining $30 in my account. Bought some VGX again to lower that dollar cost average. We're down to $2.63 per VGX token. So we're averaging at, again, I would like to accumulate ideally Voyager token under $2. Try and get this dollar cost average down. Obviously, if Bitcoin goes to 20K or 25K, we could see potentially a, a $1 VGX token. I would be ecstatic. I would be looking for everything in my room to sell that I can, you know, because I want to invest heavy this year. I'm done playing games. Last year, I've made a lot of mistakes. But first bit of news today, the U.S. to ban Russian oil imports. So Washington, March 8th from Reuters. U.S. President Joe Biden was expected to announce a ban on Russian oil and other energy imports on Tuesday in retaliation for the invasion of Ukraine. Sources familiar with the matter said the White House said Biden was scheduled to announce actions at 1045 Central Standard Time on Tuesday against Russia over Ukraine, but did not specifically mention oil imports. Oil prices jumped on the news with benchmark Brent crude LCOC1 for May climbing by 5.4%, basically 130 bucks a barrel. Biden has been working with allies in Europe who are far more dependent on Russian oil to isolate Russia's energy heavy economy. President Vladimir Putin, two people familiar with the matter, told Reuters on Monday the United States may move ahead with the ban on Russian imports oil imports without the participation of allies in Europe. The United States imported more than 20.4 million barrels of oil and crude and refined products of a month on average from Russia in 2021, about 8% of U.S. liquid fuel imports, according to the Energy Information Administration, and any ban is likely spike, and any ban is likely to spike gasoline prices and inflation even further. The United States also imports a negligible amount of coal from Russia. So, I mean, we're already seeing gas prices tick up quite a bit. I don't know if you guys have been at the pump as of late, but right around October 2020, full tank of gas for me was right around 30 to 35 dollars right now i filled up a full tank the other day it cost me about 55 dollars the gas price difference that we're paying at the pump is pretty drastic and a lot of people like to shrug it off like oh like why are you only fixated on the gas well the reality is all the goods that you see at the supermarkets and stuff like that, they come in on trucks. And surprise, surprise to no one, trucks largely still run entirely on gas. So if gas prices are higher, all the goods and products that go to the store via trucks and stuff like that, because gas prices are higher, it's going to cost more to get those goods from A to B. Pretty simple uh, logic here, but look, a decade of Russia versus U.S. gas wars in Europe laid out in U.S. Embassy case. WikiLeaks. Again, if you're not familiar with WikiLeaks, Edward Snowden, Julian Assange, some key whistleblowers who are in hiding right now and trying not to get extradited. Funnily enough, I believe Edward Snowden's actually in Russia. So the Russian government's the one thing that's keeping Edward Snowden from being extradited to the US, which would mean jail for life. Not good things. And then Julian Assange, I think, is in custody, but they still won't bring him to the US. They're trying to get that done. But look at this. Senior officials of Italian energy giant ENI reject claims that their collaboration with Russia's Gazprom endangers Europe's energy sector. Instead, they maintain that construction of South Stream and other natural gas pipelines from Russia actually increases European energy security. However, when pressed by MBOFs, ENI senior vice president admitted that Europe is now over-reliant on Russian gas and should be worried about this dependence. Like we are experiencing right now, in the Europe largely relies on Russia for natural gas. Talked about how Germany's getting rid of its nuclear power plants, meaning they're going to rely more and more on Russian gas, which is not good for them. If Russia's meddling in Ukraine, you know, trying to get the land that the oil flows through, essentially. They want control of that land in Ukraine. That's partially why they're invading. I found this kind of comical. Uyghurs in Chinese concentration camps fly Ukrainian flags so people will start caring about them. It is rather ironic, you guys, that people literally hop on to the, the narrative. Whatever is the hot topic, they just hop onto that. But they will sweep everything and anything under the rug. Like, you know, people are like, yeah, Apple, you know, Nike, blah, 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 banning, banning um, the sale of goods over 
whatever in, in Russia, you know, ha ha ha, like that's so cool. Like that's they're doing the right thing. It's like, OK, you, you do that. Uh, a lot of those same companies use arguably like almost slave labor. You know, basically they run sweatshops with very unbearable conditions. They pay their workers like SHT in China and China, for example, they literally have concentration camps for Uyghurs who's like who are a group of Muslims, essentially. I'm not that familiar with which um, part of Muslim ideology they believe in or anything like that. I'm not claiming to, but it's kind of interesting how here in America and the free world, we like to pick certain things to care about and other things. Ah, it's not a big deal. Whatever. Concentration camps, Uyghurs over in China. Ah, who cares? Anyways, last thing I want to touch up on is President Biden is to sign crypto executive order this week as industry faces sanctions pressure. A lot of people are, are getting getting nervous about this because a lot of people think it may be the, the single um, bullet to kill crypto here in the US, at least the crypto industry, which will drive um, crypto companies offshore, bring jobs elsewhere. We could have those jobs here in the US, but that's the other thing. The other side of that coin is this executive order is needed because it will provide some regulatory clarity as to how businesses can and can't can't do business here in the US, how customers can and can't trade digital assets such as crypto. Personally, I'm pretty lukewarm expecting something bad, but I think it won't be as bad as some people will make it out to be, but we'll see. Time will tell. For all we know, the U.S. may be about to shoot itself in the foot yet again with crypto, but we'll see. I mean, the SEC, like we've discussed several times here in this channel, SEC is still looking into how Celsius, Voyager, Nexo, and other platforms make money and then pay out staking rewards on their exchanges slash platforms. That was like first shot in the foot by the SEC after the SEC went after BlockFi and completely destroyed their lending product here in the U.S at least for U.S. consumers. If you're out in the U.S., you can still open an account and still be earning interest. But yeah, I'm a little concerned about this. But what does this mean for me? You know how people have been talking about how we're in a risk-off environment? I think this is even more of a sign that maybe you should play it a bit safer with what you're buying with crypto. Maybe you should not have a portfolio loaded up with SHIT coins, you know? Maybe you should probably buy some Bitcoin, some Ethereum, Ethereum, some more cryptos that are a bit less volatile, you know, in the space. That's what I personally am doing. But anything that I say on this channel is not financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor. Just need to make that abundantly clear. Anything you hear is for entertainment and education purposes only. But yeah, that about does it. What do you guys think about this executive order that Biden's going to push through here in the next week? Do you think it's going to be good, bad for the space? Good because it provides some regulatory oversight as to how business and crypto should be transacted here in the U.S.? Do you think it's bad because it may be, you know, the U.S. shooting itself in the foot? What do you think about Biden potentially banning Russian oil imports? What do you think about it? Let me know down below in the comments section. I'm not the only voice on this channel. I want to hear from you guys too, so let me know down below. Again, in the description box, I got some links for you to earn some passive income on the crypto while you still can over on Celsius and Voyager. Got a link for Biden. Binance US as well. Follow me over on Instagram. If you need to look at coin market cap for crypto prices and stuff like that, I got a link, got a link for that. Coin market calendar links down below as well. Until next time, everyone, pray, meditate, do whatever you need to do to stay level headed. And I will see you tomorrow, 10 10 a.m. Central Standard. But invest wisely. Sheesh. Peace.